So let's talk about determinants of square matrices. So determinants have um, many uses which are beyond what's in this textbook. We're just basically going to show you how to, to do a determinant for 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 matrices. In the uh, textbook, you'll see, let's just write out the word determinant. So the determinant just gives you a number associated with the matrix. And if you have a, if you have two linear equations of this form, and you want to find the solution x and y it turns out under the circumstances and the restrictions that a1 times b2 minus b1 times a2 so this times that minus that times that as far as the coefficients concerned as long as that doesn't equal 0 the x value is c1 B2 minus C2, B1 divided by A1, B2 minus A2, B1, and the Y value is A1, C2 minus A2 times C1 divided by A1, B2 minus A2, B1. You can see the denominator is the same between the two. And the uh, numerator is has C, and also it has B1, B2. Here it has A1, A2. So these products are the are actually determinants of, of different matrices. So if you looked at A1, B2 minus A2, B1, that is the determinant of a matrix. If I said, what's the determinant of the matrix A1, B1, A2, B2? Turns out the answer is equal to A1, B2 minus A2, B1. So if you looked at it, you'd say, well, if that's true, then it looks like the determinant is this entry times this entry, which is the diagonal and then you subtract the product in the other direction, which is is true. Okay, so that is just the definition of the determinant. And the numerators and the denominators of the solution are determinants of matrices that involve the coefficients and in terms of the variables and uh, also the coefficients on the right-hand side, the constants. So they're useful in solving problems like this. So that was kind of the original concept of determinants. But this is now just the definition of a determinant. For a 2 by 2 matrix, you take row 1, column 1 times row 2, column 2, and you subtract row 1, column 2 times row 2, column 1. So if I just give you a matrix, or I just make one up, 2, minus 7, minus 5, 1. And so that's the matrix. If I wanted the determinant of that matrix, so that's not equal to, but let's say that's matrix A. The determinant of that matrix so we can do that. Let's move this down a little bit. So the determinant of the matrix, which would be the determinant, I could say the determinant of matrix A, determinant of A, is equal to 2 times 1 minus negative 5 times negative 7. So that's 2. You get plus 35, but then you change the sign, so it's minus 35. And so you get negative 33. So it's it's a number. Now, 
another way of writing this process of finding the determinant is to draw vertical lines. So instead of showing it as a matrix, <coughs> you show it as you know a listing of numbers like this. But this also means determinant. So you can put the determinant in front of it. You can call matrix A, you know, represent matrix A by this, and then say the determinant of A. Or you can uh, just show these vertical lines. So the if you see this, you would say, okay, the answer is two times one minus negative five times negative seven. Same result, you get negative 33. Now, if you uh, you get zero, there's some significance to that, but uh, the significance relates to calculus. Okay, now if you want to do the determinant of a three by three matrix. Uh, there's actually two ways of doing it. The book shows you just one way, which is called using um, cofactors of a four by or three by three matrix. So what you can do, let's just draw out a three by three matrix. Okay, so that's a that's a three by three matrix. So you can't just use this formula that we've just talked about. So the way you do it is you have to create two by two matrices from this three by three matrix. And you can choose any row or any column within this matrix. And you can kind of use that as the basis for doing your calculations. So I'm going to choose row one. And I'm going to show you the, the process, and then I'm going to explain the, the background behind it. So what you do is you, you take the first entry in your row that you've chosen. I could have chosen second row, third row, first column, second column, third column. You get the same answer, no matter which way you do this. Okay, so we're going to take the, the coefficient in front of the first entry. Then you either physically or in your mind, cross out the row and column associated with that entry. That leaves this two by two matrix. So what we do is we multiply this coefficient one times the determinant of the two by two matrix that's left over after I cross them out. Okay, I'm just gonna delete. I'm just gonna delete these. Okay, so then you go to the next one, which is 2, the next number, and again you cross out the row and the column. That leaves these four. So you get negative 1, negative 2, 5, 1. Now I've left off the sign because there is, there's a sign associated with this, either plus or minus times that coefficient, but I'll explain in the second. And then you've got the third entry, which is you take five, which is the coefficient in that row. And then you cross out the row and the column associated with that number, and you're left with this two by two matrix. So you you don't write it as a matrix, you write it so that you're going to take the determinant of that two by two part. Okay, now, there's a, a pattern associated with this, and I'm going to show you for a 3x3 three three and a 4x4 four four matrix, and then it follows the same rule. So you start off with plus on the upper left-hand corner, and then as you go right on in this column, you change the side to negative and then to positive. You do the same thing going this down this way. 
you start at positive, it goes negative, positive. And to get these two, you start with one sign, which is negative, and next is positive and negative. Here it starts with positive, so this becomes negative and positive. And you see it alternates no matter which way I go. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So as you move around it, each adjacent position in the matrix is um, has an opposite sign. So here's positive, and if you go up and down, it's negative. And left to right, it's negative. So if we had a four by four matrix like this, you'd start out positive in the upper left hand corner. You go negative, positive, negative. To going down, you go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So it's again every you can, you can just go down one row and do it, one column, plus, minus, plus, minus, and then to the right you go, you just keep, keep alternating. So that's the uh, that's the previous procedure. So if we come over here, this one has a coefficient or a sign of positive. This two has a negative sign from here, and then the five has a positive. So that's how you figure out the the signs in front of those. Then you use well, the method we just talked about previously to evaluate the value of this two, two by two determinant. So what you're going to have is you're going to have three times one minus negative three times negative two. So that's the first one, coefficient one, three times one minus Three, negative three times negative two. Okay, then you have the next expression, negative two, and then you go this way and subtract going that way. So you get negative one times one minus negative two times five, and then finally plus five. So it's this one, negative one times negative three, this times that minus three times five. So up here we'll have one times three, negative three times negative two is positive six, and then you change the sign so it's negative six. Second one here we have negative one times one, which is negative one. We have negative a negative 2, so it's positive 2 times 5, so it's plus 10. And then we have plus 5 times negative 1 times negative 3, which is positive 3. And then we have negative 3 times 5, which is 15. So then you have 1 times negative 3 minus 2 times 9 plus 5 times negative 12. Sure, did that right. Okay. So you'll have negative 3 minus 18 minus 60. Each one of those. So that's negative 78, negative 81. So that's the value for the determinant associated with this original 3 by 3 matrix. So I'm going to give you another matrix, and I want you to stop the video, and I want you to work it out, and then when you finish, you can uh, check out the answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it. Oh, well, I have to give you a matrix first, so let's do that. Okay, so what I want you to do is find the determinant of that matrix. We'll see in a few minutes. 
Okay, so hopefully you did this by yourself. So the answer is 171. I chose again row 1. So I had negative 2. This was the matrix that's left over when you cross out the first row in the first column. You have negative, that's because we're going plus minus plus minus, so you get negative 3. And then what you've got left are these two terms. You cross out this and this one, you get 1, 7, 4, 1. And then you got 4, and what you've got left over is that ma little matrix 1, negative 3, 4, 2. And you then evaluate these 2 by 2 determinants as such. And so if you uh, if you want to look at it and see where you made a mistake, I'm not going to go through every little um, bit. Now, one thing you look for when doing these determinants is sometimes you look for zeros. So let's say I've got this. So I've got a, a column that has two zeros. I've got two rows that have one zero. So you look for the row or column that has the most number of zeros. And what that does is it allows you to reduce your work by a considerable amount. So I'm going to use this column as my kind of base. And remember, it's plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus. OK, so we're going to take this number, 3. And we're going to multiply by the what's left over. So I cross this out and I cross that out. I've got that left. So I've got 2 by 2 determinant. Like that. OK. Then I go to the next number, which is 0. So it's going to be minus 0. And the reality is it doesn't matter what. I don't even have to put it in there, because I know whatever the number is that I get out of that, I'm going to multiply it by 0. And then, then the third number in that particular column is 0. Again, you're going to have, you would, you would have this. Um, well, let's go ahead and put them in here just so you see what they would be to practice it. So when you go to this element, you cross up this row and this column. You've got 1, 2, 7, negative 1. And then when you go here, you cross up this column and this row. you got this left over, which is 1, 2, negative 2, 3. But these both are 0. So all you have left is 3 times negative 2 times negative 1 minus 7 times 3. So that's this part. So you get 3, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. 7 times 3 is 21, but that changed the sign. So you get 3 times negative 19. And negative 19 is negative 57. Now, I could have chosen any other row or column, and I would still get negative 57. But by choosing the row, the column that had the most zero, the row or column that had the most zeros, then I've reduced my workload considerably. I also want to show you something else. It's, it's not in the book, but I remember this from taking a class. If you were to set up a determinant so that it's a 3 by 3 determinant. And if I were to repeat the first two columns, like that, it's kind of like an aug augmented determinant. And then I just use the same kind of procedure. I multiply this. So this is this diagonal. And I subtract the 
diagonal going the other way, but I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to use the same coefficient, negative two. Actually, I'm not sure if you need another, you might need an entirely additional row here, or column, four, seven, one. So in this direction, it's positive. In this direction, it's, it's negative. So um, what you'd have is you'd have negative two, because you have both of them have negative two, and then you take this times that. So you'd have negative 3 times 1 minus 2 times 7. So we take this number, which is common to both of them. Then we, so we're going to take negative 2 times negative 3 times 1, negative 2 times negative 3 times 1. We're going to subtract negative 2 times 7 times 2, negative 2 times 7 times 2. Okay. Now, let's uh, get rid of those two little things. So now, if you do it the other way, if you do this one, so you take 3 times 7 times 4, and then you go this way like that. What you end up with there is, again, you've got 3 for both cases. So we've got 3 times, so this, this is positive because we're going this diagonal, so it's going to be 7 times 4. And then we subtract going the other way. So that's th 3, and then you've got 1 times 1. So that's plus. And then finally, you've got the last one here. So you take 4 times 1 times 2, and this way. So going this diagonal, you have it's going to be well, it's going to be plus. We got four, so you got plus four because I got four in both of them. And then you're going to have one times two, and then we're going to subtract to go in the other direction, which is negative three times four. So I've got the subtraction here, and um, what else is there to tell you? Now, what I could do is I could make this to negative sign, and I could change the order of these two. So I'd have 1 times 1 minus 7 times 4. So if I factor out a negative sign, and then I can just take those and I can move them down into there. Okay, now, if I go back to my using the cofactor approach, right here. So that was the result using the first row. Let's just compare what we get. So you see I got negative two times negative one three times one minus two. Okay, that's that's right. I get negative three times one times one. 4 times 7, 7 times 4, same thing. Uh, positive 4. So you see they're exactly the same thing. So that's another way of, of doing it without using cofactors. It's, and so you can see if you had a 4 by 4 matrix, you just, you'd have to have an additional, you'd, you'd repeat the, the values inside the, the matrix again. And you'd do these diagonals. And you'd always take this minus that, and you'd include um, the whole thing. So, you know, if you have a four by four matrix, how do you handle a four by four matrix? Well, what you'll do is you would end up going from a four by four matrix determinant to a uh, three three by three matrices, and then you would take those or determinants, and then you'd take those three by three and use for each one of those. You get Three more out of those, and ultimately you get, you know, it'd be a long expression. Uh, the book looks at a four by four, but it um, 
simplifies the whole calculation by having a particular column where you have zeros in all of them except one of the, the positions. So you can reduce it down to one calculation. Let's see if there's a, an example. If they ask, ask you to do anything like that. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking in the book. Yeah, they don't have one quite as simple as that, but uh, let me just let's just look at one. Show you how you do it. This is actually a problem, a problem in your book, and it asks you to find the determinant of this four by four matrix or four by four determinant. So you would still look for the row or column with the most number of zeros. So this, there's two, two of those. There's the fourth row has two zeros, and there's the third column, which has two zeros. You don't have one that um, has three zeros. I'm just thinking if there's, I don't think there's any way you could move them around to help you out any. No, I don't think you actually can do that. So I'm going to pick the uh, fourth row, this one here. And remember, it goes plus, minus, plus, minus. So what you would do is you take negative 7, but it would be the negative of negative 7 because it's plus, minus, plus, minus. So it's going to be negative, negative 7. And then you look at what you have left over. If you take this row and that column out, you end up with this 3 by 3 determinant, which is negative 3, 8, 2, 1, negative 1, 6, 6, 0, 9. And then uh, you go to, so let's get rid of those marks here. Then you would do 14. That's minus, plus, minus, plus. So it's going to be plus 14. And then you have a 3 by 3. So again, you cross out this row and this column. That leaves you that 3 by 3 information. So you're going to have 0, you're going to have 0, negative 3, 8, 8, 1, negative 1, negative 4, 6, 0. Okay. So now we can use the procedure we learned in the previous section to evaluate this. And again, you probably would choose, you'd pick a row that has any zeros in it, which would be this one here. And uh, I'm going to choose this one here. So we're going to have negative 7 times 7, negative and negative 7, so it would be positive 7. And then we take 6, and you mark out this column, this row. It's going to be positive, plus, minus, plus. So it's plus 6. And then what you're left with is, and let's not get too far ahead of myself here. So you're going to have 6, cross out this column, this row. What you have left is a 2 by 2 determinant, like that. Then you go to 0. It's actually minus 0, but it doesn't really matter. So you get minus 0. I'm not actually going to put the numbers in there, because it's going to be 0 times some number, which is 0. Then you have plus 9 times, so you cross out this row and this column, you're left with negative 3, 8, 1, negative 1. Okay, so that's this one. So again, these negative signs cancel out. 6 times this 
two by two determinant. Zero times would turn out to be these two, four plus nine times this, these four determinant. Okay. Then you got plus fourteen. Go to the next one. Uh, you're going to have zero for your first term. So you have zero times some two by two matrix. So it's this it's one, negative one, six, zero. Um, then you have minus a negative three. So it's negative because it's in this position, and it's negative three because that's the number. And then you multiply that by the what you've got left over. So this crosses out that and you're left with eight, negative one, negative four, zero. So you get eight, negative one negative 4, 0, and then you've got uh, plus, plus minus plus, 8, and cross this out, you got that, you're left with this little thing over here, so it's 8, 1, negative 4, 6. Okay, now I'm going to do some of this uh, in in my head, so you're gonna have eight times six is 48 minus negative two, so it's 48 plus two, which is 50. Then you've got zero. You've got plus nine times so three negative three times negative one is positive three minus eight. Three minus eight is negative five. Okay. 14 times 0, negative and negative, so that's going to be positive 3. And then you've got 8 times 0, which is 0. Negative 4 times negative 1, which is 4, but that's negative because it's on that diagonal. Plus 8 times 8 times 6 is 48. Is that right? Yeah, 48 plus 4, because you've got negative 4, change the sign, plus 4, 48 plus 4 is 52. And I'm just going to stick the rest of my calculator here. So we're going to have 7 times 6 times 50 minus 45 plus 14 times negative 12 plus 8 times 52. And I get 7,441. I'm going to pause for a second, make sure that's right. So I have um, did it. I did it, and I got 7,441. And what I'm doing is I'm using a calculator, so you can do determinants using your calculator. So I think that's pretty much it as far as the process is concerned. So you just need to try some homework problems and uh, move on to the next section.